for certain things that they recommended be accomplished by a certain point in time and that it was was or was not. And so rather than just being you ought to do this or this would be a great idea, we're optimistic that when our report is completed, it also will have measurable timelines in it that we can obviously be flexible with and may have to adjust from time to time. But we're hopeful that it will be a document more than just a, something that sits on a shelf. It doesn't have much life legs or life to it. The, the whole deal is if, if we have a plan, the community buys into it, and we're successful in executing that plan, will we all be able to look back and say some things were accomplished because we had the plan that more than likely would not have been accomplished if we didn't have the plan? If the answer to that is yes, then it's been well worth the effort, and we'll be glad we did it. If not, we just go back to everybody on their own turf and try to do what they think's right. And sometimes we work together and sometimes we don't. Nashville was, was one with our visit to Nashville made a lot of sense and we saw what they did. But they've also done some other cities that have done very well even through these tough times. Uh, in particular, Austin, Texas, and Tulsa, Oklahoma, and a few spots like that that we have researched and taken a look at, gotten uh, reports back from them, and we feel good about that. Are they saying anything um, with their planning in those other cities that, look, this is very important with regard to keeping people here, attracting, you know, people here, bringing them in? You know? I, I think that's exactly uh, on the cue of where, where we're going, is that that's what they saw in most of those cities. In the cities that I just mentioned, the Austin, Texas, or and Nashville, all of those have a quality of life right now that's attracting folks to their communities, whether it's businesses or just people that want to live there, especially in Youngtown. Uh, we're seeing uh, a great migration to those cities from uh, the younger folks of, of the country. And we want to make sure that we take a hard look at what that is that draws uh, the Youngtown, the best and the brightest that we want to keep from here in our own uh, community, but also how we can bring folks in from across the country that, that want to live here in the uh, greater Jackson area. What, one of the things that came out in the initial information that I don't want to say was surprising is something when you think about it, I think we all know, but uh, we're viewed by data as a college town, and yet we typically don't think of ourselves, or at least I don't, as a college town. I think there's 40,000 plus students here in the metro area, and about 12 different institutions that uh, offer education at a higher level. And so that attracts a lot of young people. And one of the pluses that is already showing up is that are the young people that are here in our area. And believe it or not, we have some people that are educated at a higher level than perhaps some of us would have perceived without seeing the data. And so how do we keep those kids here? How do, how do my kids or my grandkids stay? You know, what causes them to want to make this their home? And so those are some of the issues I think that are driving this whole initiative.